Hello everyone, welcome to this week's Astro Weather Report. I'm your Astro Weather Girl, Ksenia, here with this week's Astro Weather. We're going to look at the skies and we're going to see how astrology applies to your life this week with the position of the stars. Thanks for joining me. A big kiss mwah, and a welcome especially to my patrons who join me um, on my Patreon community, which is a beautiful safe space for sharing, connecting, learning and growing about astrology together. Thank you for joining me here, you guys. And also thank you to all my clients and regular viewers and friends who join me each week here at the Ksenia Moore, I was going to say Guiding Star, but it's actually Ksenia Moore YouTube channel. So lovely to have you with me as always. Now this week, the discussion is all about the grand conjunction at solstice. Now, this has been talked about all year long by astrologers, and we can see if you follow astrology, you know, podcasts and websites and what have you, all the talk at the moment is about this grand conjunction. And it's what we have been building to throughout the whole of 2020. This is our hope. This is our renewal. Now, I'm going to talk about this particular configuration, which is the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn in this video. That's what this video is all about. But if you really want to go in depth with uh, the, the astronomical, astrological and historical knowledge about this particular phenomenon, then I would encourage you to check out the videos that I've already done, hours long videos with um, Heather Land at her channel uh, Beyond Astrology with Heather. Also, I've done a video on my channel about six months ago with Crassi Atasio, brilliant sidereal astrologer. Um, check that out. It's in the Astrological Discussions uh, playlist. I was trying to think, reader's page, my playlist. Um, that discussion with Crassi. Uh, check that out. We go very in-depth with this. And um, also, this is solstice that we're looking at at the same time as the Grand Conjunction. And I've done a video just last week in collaboration with all my other uh, workers and wellness practitioners, astrologers at the Guiding Star Astrology webpage. My colleagues and I got together and did a, a special Christmas We Love You video, sharing bits of knowledge and doing ceremony together, um, giving a masterclass in tarot. And I, my piece that I shared was all about solstice and the spiritual meaning behind solstice and how we can incorporate that spiritual meaning into our lives because of the astrology of what is playing out at solstice each year. So do check that out, that component. If you don't have to listen to the whole video, it's very long, it's about an hour and a half where we're all contributing. But do check that video out and just use the timestamps, go to my section if you want to know more about solstice. I'm only going to talk briefly about the science and the, the astronomy and the, astro um, yeah, and the astronomy here about those things. Really what this video is all about is you how does this apply to you? Yes, every astrologer under the sun will tell you all the facts about Jupiter conjunct Saturn, but how is it going to be affecting your life? In what ways? That's what I'm here to tell you about today. This is what this video is all about. But before I do that, I need to draw the winner of the beautiful Sky Atlas book. This beautiful atlas um, with beautiful historical mapping and um, encyclopedic information about all sorts of astrological and astronomical phenomenon. Um, absolutely fabulous book. I'm drawing the winner here. Thank you to everybody who entered this competition. You blew me away with the amount of entries that I had. I am completely humbled, humbled get my words out, by your support for this um, or for my uh, webinar, The Astrology of Midlife. And thank you so much to all those who joined me in promoting and sharing that video. So let's find out who the winner is. I have myself not a hat to draw the winner out of, but a beautiful little bowl. So I'll hold it up here so I can't see what I'm doing. And let's swish it all around. There's so many entries in here. Okay, I'm pulling out a winner. Miriam Quiroga. I hope I said that correctly. Miriam, you are the winner. I will be in touch with you about arranging postage. Thank you for entering the competition. Thank you to everybody who entered the competition. It was just, like I said, um, really humbling, so beautiful to have so many entries supporting me. I'll just pop Miriam's name aside. Thank you, Miriam. God bless you. And happy Christmas to everybody who entered the competition. Now, before we get into the astrology, there's one other thing that I need to say. And that is that astrology is for everyone, you know, rich, poor, old, young, uh, you know, students of astrology to just newbies. Astrology is for everyone. And because of that, 
I wanted to give everyone the opportunity to have access to astrological readings. Now, when I do a reading, it takes me hours. Honestly, I spend hours researching the information, um, seeing what's going on in the chart, analyzing how it will be playing out you know, natally and so forth. I spend a lot of time. So that what we charge, what all astrologers charge for their readings reflects the amount of work and research and time and effort that they put in, as well as the knowledge that, um, that each individual astrologer carries. But not everybody can afford a, a, a recorded reading such as I provide or a consultation such as Joanna, my colleague, provides, where she does one-on-one -on -one conversations with people about their astrological chart. Not everybody can afford that, um, but everybody should have access to astrology. And that is why I have now created a page on my website, guidingstarastrology.com. I've created a page on my website dedicated to written astrology reports. These reports are written by the top astrologers in Australia. They've been associated with the production of the Solar Fire software and Stephanie Johnson and Brian Clark particularly have been big contributors to these reports. I'm very grateful to them for what they've done and what they've provided. And so if you would like a written astrology report that might tell you all about your money situation and how to deal with money in the best possible way for yourself, your health and well-being, if you would like a report about your children, a child or an adolescent, if you would like a report, a, a synastry report, a composite chart report, that means relationships relationship reports in other words or even a matchmaker report is this person marriage material for me there's even a report for that there are about 10 different reports that you can choose um, and on various different topics and themes and they range from twenty dollars to forty dollars great if you're looking for a last minute Christmas gift for somebody who you who has everything in the world get them an astrology report they're beautifully presented reports and they will be emailed to you. Uh, I'd allow a week for the, um, the emails to come through as uh, we've probably got a bit of a backlog running at the moment to produce those. But they are a cheaper version of astrology reports that you can utilize. So check that out, guidingstarastrology.com. Astrology should be for everybody, no matter what your walk of life or how much money you have in your pocket. Okay, this week, Jupiter, first thing, let me grab my little texter. Jupiter changes signs. Last week we had Saturn changing signs. I noticed that a lot of people checked out the Saturn through the houses playlist at my um, channel to find out what Saturn changing signs last week was gonna mean for them for the next three and a half years. There's also a playlist on my channel for Jupiter changing signs, or rather Jupiter moving through each house of the horoscope. And in the, that playlist, I explained to you how to find out what house Jupiter will actually be transiting for you for the next year ahead. But that is occurring this week, the shift of Jupiter. Now, generally, we tend to feel Saturn's change of signs a lot more than we feel Jupiter's. So expect that you'll notice um, the Saturn change rather than the, the Jupiter change more. But just the same, it's important to be aware and know what joy is in store for you this year. Jupiter is our joy, where we can find our joy, where we can find um, a sense of expansion, growth and happiness in the year ahead. So do check out that video. I know we all want a bit more joy after 2020. So I want you to check out that. I'm not gonna to spend too much time talking about Jupiter changing signs simply because I've got at least 120 hours worth of information there at my playlist about Jupiter moving through the signs. So let's move straight on to the grand conjunction. I'm gonna be referring to my notes here. I'm standing up this week, you might notice, <laughs> um, which is gonna be much better for my back. So uh, now, the grand conjunction is occurring at zero degrees of Aquarius up here in the sky. Jupiter and Saturn together in the sky. Let's go briefly through what this means. And it will be brief because as I said, I've done heaps about this already. But it happens every 20 years. Every 20 years you get Jupiter and Saturn together in the sky. It's a catalyst for social, cultural and economic shifts in the world. And we're seeing that. This year has been heralding that. This is a catalyst that, that's saying, right, everything's going to change direction now, economically, socially, and culturally. We know that's happening, and this is just another solidification of that. Now, the Jupiter-Saturn conjunction is usually in a, in a single uh, modality. 
air signs, fire signs, water signs, earth signs. It's in a single modality for 200 years at a time that we have the conjoining of these two. Sometimes towards the end of that 200 year period, you'll get an anomaly where the planets will conjoin um, sort of in a, in, a, in a different sign. It's sort of a forerunner, a foretaste of the new modality that the, the grand conjunction will be moving into for the next 200 years. So back in 1981, we had a conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn in the sign of Libra, and that was the foretaste. Because we are leaving a 200 year cycle of Earth energy for grand conjunctions and now moving into a 200 year cycle of air energy for grand conjunctions so we're um we're beginning this now we've had a taste back in 1981 now boom we're moving into it full on we'll talk about what that means in just a minute but this is called the great mutation when we have the shift from modalities with the grand conjunction it's it's a huge event Really, that's, that's really big. But not only is that a huge event, event, but this particular grand conjunction is a huge event because it's the first time we have had Jupiter and Saturn so physically closely aligned from our vantage point on Earth in the sky. Usually when they get together, they might be sort of, um, they're at the same degree, but longitudinally they might be a bit separate. So in this case, they're going to be the closest that they have ever been, well, have been since about, let me check my dates, 1623 was what the last time this, they were this close together. But I want to point out, in, in 1623, you wouldn't have been able to see it because they were hidden in the sun's glare or they were a bit too close together being in earth signs, Capricorn. So you wouldn't have seen it. Um, it would have occurred sort of um, around sunset or something like that and you know just the, the, the sun's glare was just too much for it to be seen. The last time you would have been visibly able to see a grand conjunction this close together was all the way back in 1226. So we're talking a hell of a long time and it was sort of around that time actually that we had grand conjunctions in air signs beginning again the cycle started but way way back then and so it is a very powerful time like uh, um, you may not have heard that in other astrological sites but it is doubly powerful because from a visible perspective you go out at night go out in the evening sort of um you know uh, just around sunset just after sunset twilight time you will see them together in the sky on the 22nd in australia and the 21st in other parts of the world that's when this will be occurring and you will see them close together in the sky. You will never see this again in your lifetime, them this close together. It's that rare. And as the ancient Persians believed, you know, what we see above is reflected below. And the, the power of this grand conjunction and the fact that it's so close together will not be uh, going amiss in regards to what happens on the earth because what happens in the sky is reflected on the earth below the ancient hermetic principle sorry not the not the persians but they were the persians were viewers of the sky they went out and observed and i'd encourage you to do the same for this very special astrological event so all of this makes for one of the most apocryphal periods of history astrologically like you are so blessed to be a part of this to be here to witness this amazing event. This is also known as the Star of Bethlehem and the wise men in the Bible were, you know, absolutely, they were astrologers, absolutely thrilled by being able to view this particularly phenomenal event that was quite special in the sign of Pisces way, way back. Um, but it will also herald apocryphal changes socially, economically and culturally and this is going to impact us for the next couple of hundred years as we move further into air sign energy. So that is why this is such an important event. Now I want to briefly touch on solstice which is occurring at the same time and that's very powerful in and of itself let alone combined with this phenomenal grand conjunction that we're having. Solstice is when we have the shortest days and the longest days, depending on where you are in the world. In Australia, we're going to have the longest days. In the Northern Hemisphere, you're going to have the shortest days because in the Northern Hemisphere, it's winter solstice. In the Southern Hemisphere, it's summer solstice. So it represents a transition from darkness to light for 
some cultures and light to darkness for other cultures. In Australia, it's a transition from light. We've had the longest days. Now the days are going to start getting shorter. In the Northern Hemisphere, you've had the shortest days and now the days are going to start getting longer. The transition now occurs. So solstice is therefore considered to be the three days around the solstice, winter or summer, is when the sun appears to stand still in its northward or southward trajectory um, and it doesn't seem to move beyond a certain point for three days and that is considered to be an incubation time. I talk more about this in my recent video on um, uh, in collaboration with the other practitioners from Guiding Star. Uh, check that out if you want to know more but it's an incubation time, three day period when we wait for something to be born. And so I want to remind you and ask you what darkness are you shedding at this time in this incubation period and what intentions are you setting? This is the time for setting intentions. The time when the sun moves to the first degree of Capricorn every year is the time for setting intentions for the year ahead. Not new year, but solstice. And the intentions that you set now are going to be energetically supported as they are every solstice. But doubly so now because guess what? The intentions that we set for ourselves, for the world, for humanity are going to be impactful for the next, not just year until the next solstice at this at zero degrees of Capricorn, but for the next 20 years under the alignment of Jupiter and Saturn together and for the next 200 years of humanity in the air sign grand conjunction modality. A powerful, powerful time. My best friend and I are going to be going and doing ceremony together to celebrate this time in a very sacred place. I'd encourage you if you have the opportunity to do the same thing or even set up a little ceremony at home in your bedroom, light some candles, write in your journal about your intentions, whatever looks like ritual or ceremony to you, it is energetically valuable at this time to enter into that kind of practice. So this energy speaks to something new being born into the world and something new being born into our personal lives as well. Highly manifesting, very exciting time. Can you tell in my voice? <laughs> I'm so excited about this. Um, it's, it's thrilling to be alive under such an astrological um, configuration. Uh, so from now on, as we enter into a grand conjunction in the air modality, what can we expect to see? Well, we can expect to see, it's like we're sort of entering into a little mini age of Aquarius. Some astrologers, um, my jury is out on this, I'm still doing an assessment around this. Some astrologers believe we're in the age of Aquarius, some believe that it won't start for another 300 years. There is this bit of transition period from, um, uh, from age of Pisces into age of Aquarius. But with grand conjunctions in air signs, we are already, we're beginning a mini age of Aquarius um, right now especially uh, particularly because it's in the sign of Aquarius and so that's going to be for the next 20 years that we'll be in the mini age of Aquarius. For some it means, you know, it, it heralds the beginning of the age of Aquarius. Like I said, my jury's out, I'm still assessing that myself. But we can expect to see for the next 20 years because of this new tech and social media be becoming the, the main economic drivers. Technology, social media, anything uh, involving systems and internet is where it's at. So if you're not there yet, jump on board, get online. Um, ideas can become more valuable than practical application under air science. It's all about up here rather than doing, using the hands, creating and what have you. So um, that can be great. We'll have a lot of great ideas and inventions and new thoughts, but the practical application in the world might be a bit iffy. And we see that uh, already with these great inventions of iPads and um, you know smartphones and yada 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 and apps and things like that but are they doing humanity good or not? Are they practically helpful or are they just making our lives more complex and more stressful? I mean it's a bit of a juggle um, with that so that's an example but there can be there's going to be greater equality and freedom that comes with this new let's call it the mini Aquarius age um, and the desire for equality and the desire for freedom will increase so this is fantastic I am so excited about this 
for for you know women and men on equal playing fields for all races all ages on similar playing fields in the world i think it's high time the world got back to that state of partnership model rather than dominator model in society absolutely we're going to see more interconnected systems and a greater globalised community. Uh, obviously, that's already been happening, but it began around 1981 when we had the first of the grand conjunctions in air sign and took place in the sign of Libra. Then we had another grand conjunction in Taurus 20 years after that, and now we've got this one coming. So um, we're going to see that increase. Globalised village if you like global community online communities um, and interconnected systems where we, we're very you know the world becomes smaller so to speak because my best friend lives in america and we just talk on email every day or my boyfriend's you know a thousand miles away and we skype every night or whatever so the world becomes smaller as our interconnected systems uh, start to take over that can be good or bad depending on your perspective on your point of view there I love this. I love the fact that the New Age movement will get a, a big Guernsey now, sort of bohemian qualities and alternative practices now are going to like rocket launch. Hurrah! <laughs> I'm thrilled about that. We're also going to see altruism and humanitarianism also rise, and that will also aid in the equality. You know, no more they're poor, I'm rich. There's going to be a balancing now of, of what we all need and people getting their needs met rather than some people, some fat cats having far more than they, they need and other people having nothing. So I'm thrilled about that being one of the potentials of this mini age of Aquarius. Aside from that, um, there is a shadow side to all planets, all signs and all houses in the horoscope. And the shadow side to this particular configuration in Aries is rebelliousness. Rebelliousness without a cause. We're not James Dean here, uh, or we're actually we are James Dean. We're a rebel, rebel without a cause. Sorry, I had to think of the title of the film. Yes, yeah, without a cause, rebel without a cause. We are James Dean. We're going to be, we're going to be, uh, with a shadow side rather of Aquarius is to be rebellious, but with no good reason. You know, I'm going to go loot the shops. Um, in this protest march because just because I can and is that going to help the the cause is that is that going to help what we're trying to achieve here no but I'm going to be a rebel just the same it's that kind of behavior that is the shadow side of Aquarius that may be on the rise as well fanaticism fanaticism will be on the rise we're already seeing that in uh, a lot of online communities it's going to be more present and prevalent and visible now um, the fanaticism and the extremist approach to things that's the shadow side as well and alongside that oh my god i'm not looking forward to this at all online bullying i already uh, not so much on my channel thank you one and all big kisses god bless you all um, but online bullying on another astrology channel that i'm involved with it is hideous what um, the astrologers on that channel have to cop in comments and so forth online and it's not just me it's all of us um, but it's disgusting and with the um, grand conjunction in air signs the shadow side is online bullying and you know this is why I've developed my patron community quite frankly because I want a safe space where people can go and not get attacked where people aren't going to attack me or my other astrologers or my other wellness practitioners at Guiding Star. I've developed my Patreon page so that we can be safe because we, let's face it, most online bullies won't be paying to be able to go, you know, spread their maliciousness. Let's hope. <laughs> but, but we'll see a lot more um, online, uh, sorry, patron kind of membership programs developing now because People want a safe space. Russell Brand has talked extensively about this. People want the safe space away from the haters. And so these little um, communities online, on you know the internet, will develop now uh, creating safe space. But yeah, that's, that's as a reaction to the bullying that is present so much on there, honestly. Um, so yeah, let's all be prepared for this <laughs> and perhaps we should develop a plan of action of how we're going to deal with it when and if we see this sort of thing. I know I need to develop some sort of moderation uh, on my channel to, to protect my practitioners and my viewers as well as myself. 
Um, there can also be coming with this, um, and we've seen it already, it's already happening, addiction to technology, zombieism, um, becoming sort of, you know, you can't go anywhere without your phone, your fe fear of missing out because your phone's not with you. That is also the shadow side of what we're going to be seeing. Um, we're going to see a faster pace of life that comes with this very mental in your head air energy and the faster pace of life is going to then result in a lot more mental health issues and anxiety problems so uh, if you are a practitioner helping people dealing with people with anxiety and mental health um, you know you are going to have be very busy and get plenty of work but you're also in a field where you have a, a beautiful gift to give the world a beautiful uh, quality that the world is going to desperately need people who can help with anxiety post-traumatic stress disorder mental health issues and so on and we're also going to see a rise and this is the, all the shadow side that I'm talking about here a rise in virtual reality um, my my boys I've got two teenage boys are perfect examples of that it concerns me greatly I fought it with all my might and main I fought their computer addiction and I fought their virtual reality addiction but it is it's it's too big, <laughs> unfortunately, and we're going to be seeing so much of this uh, dominating our culture in the future. We need to have strategies for how we're going to deal with it. Um, so I don't mean to scare anyone by sharing about this stuff, but we need to know what we're looking forward to and we need to know what um, this grand conjunction is heralding in the shadow side as well as in the light. There's good and bad in both. So let's be prepared and um, let's be forearmed. So now let's take a peek at the chart of this particular grand conjunction. Well, we have a lot to thank the universe for. God bless the, or the energy of love in the universe has been holding space for those of us here on planet Earth right now because Saturn is before Jupiter. It is Jupiter that caught up with Saturn in the grand conjunction and will overtake Saturn and move on through Aquarius. Saturn comes first. Saturn is first and Jupiter catches him. Because of that, we're going to be spared um, a lot of difficulty. You know, if, if it was the other way around where, say, Jupiter was stationary or retrograding and Saturn caught Jupiter for the grand conjunction, then it would be likely that we every endeavor that we undertook for the next 20 years as humanity and as individuals would be met with strong opposition, challenges, difficulties, maybe even uh, violence and war that can often come about with this. Um, so personally, globally, difficulties if Jupiter had been first. Thank God Saturn is first. And so that means that we're going to have um, op uh, our opportunities that come will be will have less resistance to the manifesting and more opportunity for them to flourish. So such a blessing. This is also conjunct um, the fixed star Altair. Now, uh, Altair's at three degrees of the um, sign of Aquarius and the grand conjunction is at zero degrees. I want to show you a picture of this in the sky. I'm going to cut to Stellarium, one of my favorite apps that will show you how this is lined up in the sky. So that is Stellarium and you can see in Stellarium that um, the star Altair is quite above the ecliptic plane and it's uh, what we do when that's the case. There's only really two stars that sit on the ecliptic plane, two main stars that we work with uh, in fixed star astrology quite extensively um, and that is Regulus and Speaker. Um, so they're very strong and very powerful, but all other stars are sort of off the ecliptic plane a bit and their trajectory is kind of like they line them up with a certain degree and that's, you know, project them onto that degree of the ecliptic. So it is considered that Altair is at three degrees of the ecliptic plane of in Aquarius. What is Altair going to bring to this grand conjunction? It's within orb, it's within two degrees. Um, two to three degrees of this particular conjunction and it means it's going to bring sort of boldness, confidence to the world, um, a lot more ambition will be present in the world because of the grand conjunction with Altair, um, sudden wealth that can come because of the grand conjunction being in such close proximity to this rather auspicious star, great wealth, sudden wealth, um, for some people they will experience that, 
Um, uh, there, there's the energy of being very commanding and authoritative. Um, now, on the shadow side, because everything has a shadow side, there is guilt with bloodshed in the ancient terminology here um, and danger from reptiles. So if you live in Australia and there's lots of snakes that are poisonous, do be careful um, around this time. But we might see some manifestations of these particular energies, hopefully the more positive ones um, predominantly, throughout the next 20 years as well. Now, I only use five degree orbs when I do charts because other, I, I like to keep my information to the most powerful information present in a chart. Um, there's just too much else to consider and I could hear, stand here talking to you for 24 hours about everything that's in <laughs> every chart. Um, and so I, I narrow it down by using five degree orbs and only focusing on what five degree orbs have to say. So as such, the strongest aspect to this grand conjunction is actually coming from the moon in a conjunction with Chiron. Sorry, I tell a lie. It's, they're not in conjunction, but they are both making a sextile here to the grand conjunction. So the moon's at about 26 degrees of Pisces. Remember, the um, conjunction is at zero degrees of Aquarius, so that's within that five degree orb. But also within that five degree orb is Chiron, who sits about here, I think at four degrees, making also a sextile to the grand conjunction. So the moon and Chiron aren't conjunct, but they are both making a sextile to the grand conjunction because they're within orb. So what does this mean? Well, this is a beautiful aspect. This is a supportive aspect. Not as strong as a trine might be, but supportive nonetheless. And these two, the moon and Chiron, bring healing to this energy. They both bring um, nurturance. They bring care. They bring uh, progress despite obstacles. These are the key themes for this grand conjunction. So we've got, we've got nurturance and care coming from the moon. We've got addressing of wounds, and this will be society's wounds as well as personal wounds, addressing of our society's wounds with nurturance and care for healing to arrive this sextile to the grand conjunction. So I love this. It is promising and it is hopeful and it is the strongest aspect that is being made to the grand conjunction itself. That said, there is still in this chart a configuration that is challenging and it's been a configuration playing out all year so it's not something we're unfamiliar with at this stage. It is Mars making, let me try and get this right here, a square, we have to go through Pluto to get it, a square to Pluto. Mars is squaring Pluto and this is a tense energy. A square is also always, it carries the energy of Saturn that's like obstacles, blockage, restrictions, sort of being clamped down upon something we've got to push through to get progress. Um, so what does this mean? This is an influence that's going to be present in the chart of this grand conjunction for the next 20 years, so it's important to consider as well. It can indicate a strong but misdirected will, sense of willpower, um, a, a contradiction between collective desires and personal desires. I've talked about this in my Mars retrograde video also on my channel if you want to go back through and find that one and want to know more about this. So I'm just briefly touching on it now. Um, this is an energy of secret motives, things going on behind the scenes um, that we don't know about. That's already been obvious all year long, hasn't it, in certain... Um, uh, to do with certain medical things. Uh, heroism is one of the positive sides of this particular combination. Heroism and motivation to make change, energy and strength putting into uh, change and transformation, that can be increased and that's one of the more positive aspects of this and also increased sexual desire because these are both planets of sexuality. Mars and Pluto are both to do with sexual expression and passion. So that will increase upon the earth and possibly in your own life as well over the next 20 years. For some that'll be the end of a big drought <laughs> and for others it might be a bit too much. So um, yeah that's what we're carrying forward with this grand conjunction chart. Now the moment you've all been waiting for, how's this going to affect you personally? Okay so what it's going to mean is that personal ambition in the sign of Aquarius, whatever Aquarius rules in your chart, whatever house it rules, personal ambition is going to increase. You're going to have more desire for social status and more desire for personal power 
in whatever the sign of Aquarius rules. You're going to be able to set goals and achieve them now because this is a this is a goal setting energy and an energy for manifestation as well for bringing the the dreams of our mind, the aspirations in our mind into fruition in reality. So you'll be able to set and achieve goals, but you'll you'll have still have to work hard to achieve them, but they become more achievable. And that's why it's so important to set intentions under this energy because that's what you'll be working towards. That's what you'll be building and constructing. Saturn is construction. Jupiter is to expand and bring blessing and luck. So all this energy is it like set intentions. Underline that. <laughs> if you take anything out of this video, take that. Let's go up and set some intentions under this, this particular configuration on the 21st or the 22nd, wherever you are in the world. Um, it's about setting achievable goals, working hard to attain them. Already said that. It, this represents a specific life mission for us going ahead for the next 20 years. Um, it's a specific purpose that we will now carry within us for the next 20 years. Um, and that is now going to be activated. I'm going to talk about this for all signs. This is an energy of manifestation. It's an energy of growth and opportunity and expansion of boundaries. It's about moving your tent pegs back, as um, the old biblical adage goes. Move your tent pegs back, make more space, create more room, create more um, freedom for yourself as well. It's about expansion of personal boundaries. You can expand to meet your destiny. One of my favorite mantras there. We're all stepping up the ladder. Now, a lot of people are feeling this already. We've been like, oh, I'm so ready for this. Bring it on, bring it on. Um, we're stepping up the rung towards our enlightenment as a collective and as individuals. Now, that doesn't mean we're not gonna face challenges. That doesn't mean that there isn't gonna be difficulties in the world, but we as a collective will increase in our awareness. This is, amongst other things, 2020 is known already as the great awakening, when people woke up from their blindness, from their darkness. And that's very much what this energy is all about too, stepping up the ladder of awakening and awareness. So we're going to the next level. Very, very exciting. So any fears and uncomfortable life situations that you find yourself in now or that you've been grappling with all year long, well, I've got to say they're going to become intolerable now and that will then bring change. And this is going to play out over the coming year and then go on for the next 20 years, of course. But anything that you're in a state of, I just can't do this anymore, I'm sick to death of this, this is killing me, well, you're not going to be able to cope with it anymore. It will come to its natural end whatever that particular situation is and that will trigger change that feeling of i can't cope with this any longer will lead to change ultimately um, you're going to desire more freedom we talked about this as a collective but in your life personally a desire now for more freedom freedom from the tyrannical boss or freedom from you know your obligations and and um, the social expectations that might have been weighing you down big changes in that regard and it is the energy of fated events and lucky breaks. For some people, this, is, this grand conjunction is going to bring miracles into their life. Big turns around. So, so exciting, this energy. Let's break it down for all signs. Now, Aquarius, you have had quite the couple of, <laughs> quite the couple of years um, and I want to start with you guys, give you the privilege of going first because all this is taking place in your sign. So in the first house, what does this mean for you when we have a grand conjunction in the first house? Well, the ambition that you have for yourself will increase now. You are going to be able to make plans and see them come to, a fru to fruition because the first house is about initiation, beginning something fresh, beginning something new. And it's, you're going to be able to begin a whole new life under this energy that's going to last and be established for the coming 20 years. What a blessing, what a privilege that you carry. So you're going to initiate something new and your ambitions, uh, personal ambitions will be for your own life. And you, because you're very altruistic, you will also bring that into humanity as well. But your new ambition might be, I want to create a, a charitable society. And, and you, you spend the next 20 years working on that beautiful goal, but you are heading up this charitable society. And that's a goal or an ambition that you might set for yourself. That's just one example. It's a, 
It's an energy of independence, first house. It's an energy of in, um, initiation and beginnings, entrepreneurism, new starts, turning over a new leaf. So that is where it's at for you. And you'll be able to work hard towards whatever goals that you set for yourself, for your soul's growth, for your body and its journey. Now that can also relate to your, your actual physical expression. So you're going to be able to set goals now for I'm going to lose weight or I'm going to get fit or I'm going to um, rejuvenate my physical appearance in some way. Set goals and you're going to work hard towards achieving them and they are achievable. You will be blessed to achieve those goals um, now under this. And that can also be not only your physical expression but who you are. Is there something in you that you need to change, that you want to leave behind? Remember this is solstice. We're leaving behind the darkness and we're embracing embracing the light we're incubating the future right now at solstice time what is it within you personally it's all about you Aquarius what is it that you personally want to conclude that's dark within you so that you can embrace more light well now you can set intentions and see that happen miracles can happen for you around those themes you're going to expand your personal boundaries this is big like you know you who you are there's no stopping you now the boundaries like a uh, blown out <laughs> so to speak so if you felt restricted if you felt blocked if you've just felt like I can't overcome I can't achieve everything's holding me back well this grand conjunction is telling you the boundaries that are blocking you restricting you holding you back are gone so exciting in that regard and um, you're going to want more freedom for yourself personal freedom we talked about that in the intro and it's in relation to um, this first house placement that you will have a special mission now establishing for the next 20 years your mission is to know yourself to honor yourself to put yourself first for a change i mean aquarians are so good at thinking about well what does society need what's best for humanity well now i'm here to tell you aquarius for the next 20 years it's all about you your special mission is okay what do I need put me first and then think about humanity so in that sense Aquarius it looks like a very promising period for you um, of, of blessing this is also fated events lucky breaks that can happen for you um, in relation to your body and its journey your physical life experience on the planet can um, be strongly affected now um, you might get for example a lucky break that uh, takes you to the career of your dreams or you know helps you to meet the the soulmate or um, you know takes you to a, a location or a home that you you only ever imagined in your wildest fantasies that you could have because the first house correlates to many things actually but um, things that that are about our physical journey are first house things what does the body experience well the body experiences finding a soulmate the body experiences moving to a new house the body experiences uh, getting a pay rise or something like that so everything is wrapped up in the first house essentially that the body experiences and then we break it down into more specifics with the other houses but where we what the body experiences is first house stuff okay so the next sign we're going to look at is Pisces and Pisces is having this occurring in their 12th house so it's for Pisces um, falling in the house of creativity divine healing and divine spirituality so your special life mission and purpose that is being established under this energy has to do with spiritual and creative and healing things you might find Pisces people that after this grand conjunction suddenly you your third eye opens or you are actually you start communicating directly with the divine in a way you haven't done before you might start speaking to the angels you might start um, uh, seeing people's past lives clearly you might you know be on a bus and see other entities or something and like oh that's never happened to me before it's like a great awakening of your already powerful Pisces people spiritual powers and spiritual connections and there's a special life mission associated with an increase in spiritual power for Pisces people under this grand conjunction that's going to be activated for some people they'll find that their creativity blossoms 
and that's their special mission. They're going to be the next Vincent van Gogh or they're going to be uh, the next, I don't know, uh, Paul McCartney who writes amazing songs. He's very Piscean. Um, and so you might find this, this heralds a divine inspiration of creativity that is with you for the next 20 years as well. That's another manifestation and healing. If you are sick, you might find that this is the instigation of miraculous healing and that becomes your special mission and life purpose to share about your miraculous healing and how you know that you are well now from some illness with the world or maybe it's that you become a divine healer and you have what it takes now to um to, to bless other people with insights wisdom and um, maybe laying on of hands and energy healing and that sort of thing or healing where the divine the angels flow through you as a, as a tool, as a vessel for healing for other people. Powerful energy that is available uh, in the 12th house realms to some Pisces who are open and waiting and ready for such things to enter their lives. So it's uh, an expansion of boundaries in the 12th house realms. I've already kind of alluded to that, you know, because we can now communicate with the divine world, now we can do amazing things spiritually because our boundaries, we're already fairly boundaryless if we're Pisces, but now our boundaries are like blown way out of the water and we're going to be able to really interact directly with the divine, receive divine downloads of creativity and divine channelings of healings and so on. Very, very powerful. Pisces, this is this is nothing to be sniffed at. This, this grand conjunction in your 12th house is activating everything that you already are to the nth degree. Finally for Pisces, this is the house of miracles. 12th house is, is yes, it's loss. So in this sense, we are losing a, a part of ourselves to welcome in the divine. I mean, that, that happens. I mean, if you're channeling the divine, then you kind of step aside and the divine comes through you. If you're channeling divine creativity, then your little cartoon drawings step aside for a magnificent painting to be channeled through you, you know. So that, that's, that's really the loss element here of the 12th house. But it's also a house of divine healing, as I've said, and miracles. So you might have something miraculous occur in your life because of this grand conjunction. If you're working with the energies at the highest level, that's when you can see, you know, miracles occurring and and you know we, we actually miracles happen every day we just don't have the eyes to see them so perhaps I might change how I phrase that and say your eyes will be open to see the miracles that are occurring around you every day with this energy um, and you will notice them more you will celebrate them more you will experience them more because you'll be more aware of the miracles in your life all the time okay uh, to Aries, Aries rising, sun or moon people. Well, the energy of the grand conjunction for you falls in your 11th house. And so it's in 11th house areas that you're going to have a lot more personal ambition being instigated under this grand conjunction energy. So 11th house is friendship groups, networks, social circles. So you might have a lot more ambition to sort of get into that country club or be a part of that exclusive society or something. Um, you will have the personal ambition and you'll be able to achieve those ambitions of being part of those social networks. This is also the, the beautiful benevolent house of rewards and gains. And so your ambitions and goals and dreams are solidified under this. What is it that your ambition is for? What are you dreaming of? What are you hoping for? It is achievable because you now have the grand conjunction hitting the energy of your 11th house so profoundly. So uh, social status and power, yeah, you want to be like in the, the cool social groups and the, you know, the, the humanitarian organizations, you want to be part of that, you want to be where the action is in that regard, that'll be a thing. But also achieving your goals and dreams and you'll have what it takes to work hard to see them manifest for you now. You'll also have a specific life purpose and a life mission I already described this in being part of social groups but it might be to really make a difference in society this is a very benevolent house in terms of its altruism and humanitarianism so that you might find suddenly you know you have this life mission and a purpose that bubbles up inside you out of nowhere almost to uh, help you know uh, single mothers who have nowhere to live or um, you might have a, a, a purpose 
that rises up inside you to, uh, to, to provide food for people who don't have access to fresh water and food around the world. So you start some activist thing regarding that or maybe you're really, really passionate um, about dealing with abuse and, and the, the, the struggles of people who've been through abusive situations or post-traumatic stress disorder, whatever. I mean, you name whatever humanitarian issue that is close to your heart you have a special mission now under this energy to take action. And if anyone can take action for worthy causes, it is Aries people. They are the warriors. They are the heroes out to save the world. And they can, they can absolutely do this with the grand conjunction occurring in the house of humanitarianism. I'm so glad that it's occurring in Aries people's 11th house because they're the ones who are going to make it happen. Go get them, guys. So there's an expansion of boundaries in that realm too. Your friendship groups will increase, your social connections will increase because of this conjunction. You will find also for the next 20 years uh, that your ambitions might increase. You know, you like you uh, initially you wanted to be the mayor of your local town, you end up becoming the president uh, instead, you know. So ambitions can, can increase quite profoundly because the, any boundaries around 11th house matters get blown out now. Um, under this this energy and also there can be fated events and lucky breaks that come with this conjunction also what does that mean in the 11th house it means that friends can provide you with a lucky break or a, a tip off oh you know go and invest in this or um, you know you can have a lucky break with the rewards that you receive for the work you've already done you know you you were put submitting tenders for some wonderful amazing project and it was a you were a real outsider on, on getting that particular million dollar project and, and then lo and behold grand conjunction in the 11th house of rewards and gains you get that project you get that million dollar contract so miracles if you want to call them that but lucky breaks that take you you know up and away for the next 20 years if you're working at a high level with this energy fated events that transform your life come with this particular conjunction in the 11th house. Faded events with friends, faded events with rewards and gains and ambitions. In the sign, <clears throat> for the, the rising sun or moon sign of Taurus, well, we see the grand conjunction falling in their 10th house. What does this mean? It means lots of personal ambition for Taurian people. So, you know, what, what are your ambitions? Ask yourself now, what do you, what do you see yourself doing for the next 20 years? Really, for Taurian people, it is a time to sit and think about that, ponder that, go deep with that, because you, this is an energy of increasing your personal ambitions. And by ambitions, I'm not just talking about the societal expected ambitions. We are talking Aquarius here. What are the ambitions that um, are a bit unique, a bit diverse for you? It might be, I want to be a... a somebody who establishes a bohemian center or I want to be somebody who builds an environmental community an eco community you know it'll be something a bit more left of center not quite I want to be head of the mining company kind of thing so what are your ambitions what are your goals for, and dreams for your life um, here in the 10th house regarding what you want to be remembered for what you want to be known for this is something that I find helps give me clarity around the 10th house the 10th house is career yes it is that um, and it is also social status and recognition but it is also what we want to be remembered for what did Vincent van Gogh do he painted and he made a, a beautiful body of work that he left the world and changed the whole art scene with but did he receive any money for it? No, he didn't. Um, it was his passion. It was his joy. And it's what he wanted to be remembered for was, like, here's this beautiful art. So what is your passion? What is your joy? What do you want to be known for? What do you want to be remembered for? Now's the time to review that because you're going to have what it takes to manifest it, to make it happen, to get it going. So your personal, personal ambition for social status and for career and for you know, personal joy manifesting in the world through some legacy that you want to leave is going to be triggered now. And this is your life purpose. This is, this is the special triggering of purpose and mission for you now to actually achieve in the world, to do something of value that is left for those who come behind now. Taurus people, I'm so glad you've got this particular grand conjunction in your sign because um, I think what Taurian people establish as a legacy for the generations that come after 
that of all people, the Taurian people carry the, the most beautiful gift. Beauty, art, uh, nature, environment. That's the gift that of Taurus to the world. Um, you know, fine culture, food and, and clothing and shelter that is beautiful. Uh, and the arts and music and all these lovely things. Taurus connects with those things. And so Taurian ambitions, 10th house, um, and, and in the house of legacy can be those beautiful things and the world needs those things, those aesthetic things, those things of luxury, those things of comfort, those things of calm, solid stability and ease. Um, so we could see a lot more organic communities popping up now after the grand conjunction in the 10th house for Taurian people. And they'll be led by people with this earthy back to basics focus that Tor Taurian people carry. So that is your mission to establish those things, to build those things, Taurian people. I love it. Um, your boundaries in those matters will also be expanded. If you're feeling blocked about establishing something like that or building something like that, uh, the, the boundaries will tend to disappear under this energy. They'll be pulled back under this energy um, because this, is, this expands our boundaries, this grand conjunction. And it can bring faded events and lucky breaks. So for Taurian people, you might get a promotion you might get recognition for work that you've done. Your social status might increase. You might find, um, yeah, that your your reputation gets, you know, polished up. So this is lovely, lovely energy for great, greater success, greater visibility in the world of Taurian people and, and what they're doing, what they're bringing to society. And I love it. So perfect to have this happening in your 10th house, Taurus. Okay, if you're Gemini rising or sun or moon, the energy is falling, whoops, I'm going to have to hold you. The energy of the Grand Conjunction here is falling up in your ninth house, the most blessed house in the horoscope because it does a forward trine towards the first house of the body. So what it indicates therefore is blessing that comes to your body's journey in this incarnation. So a lovely place to be having the Grand Conjunction for Gemini, Rising Sun or Moon people. So your personal ambitions in the ninth house realms are going to be increased. This might mean over the next 20 years you get the desire to really study something at a high level, to go uh, to you know get that degree, to get that recognition you know academically now, to surround yourself with intellectual people and this can be part of your ambitions and dreams to be an, an intellectual person, to be uh, a, an inspiring person, a guru to others. And that can actually manifest for you now. This is a ninth house energy to be uh, a leader through inspiration, a leader through um, wisdom to other people. And that may very well happen for a lot of Gemini people. In fact, I'm thinking of a few Gemini people now who are, I can see are heading into this territory already. There is an expansion of boundaries in a very free house in, of the horoscope. Like uh, this is a house of travel abroad, other cultures, expanding the mind, expanding our awareness through life experience uh, of other cultures and other ways of life is a ninth house thing. And so hello, here the boundaries are expanded. I think for many Gemini people, they're going to do a lot more traveling and living overseas in the next 20 years. And through that, their minds will expand, their hearts will expand, their souls will expand because of the grand conjunction falling in the ninth house. This is actually your mission and your life purpose to be an inspiration to others, to expand your own heart and mind and, you know, to, to reach others with wisdom. And, and Gemini people carry a lot of wisdom, a lot of knowledge. It's now time, Gemini people, I feel, for you to, to stop gathering and harvesting wisdom from all over the place, a bit here, a bit there, oh, I'll do this course, I'll do that course, and yep, I'll get a certificate in that and whatever. Now it's time to hone that and funnel it into something specific. It's a very specific house, the ninth house. For Gemini, rising sun and moon, it is about getting the specifics now and directing it towards some mastery in some realm. So very exciting. That's your that's your mission. That's your purpose under this grand conjunction energy. Um, and so ex I've already said boundaries have been expanded, and you can have fated and lucky events that occur for you in ninth house realms. You know, somebody um, can't 
use their round the world ticket on a plane in a few years time when we're allowed to fly again um, <laughs> we somebody can't use their round the world ticket so they they give it to you lucky break regarding travel and world expansion you know or somebody offers you their house in the Greek islands for a holiday and you're like whoa yes please so lucky breaks regarding travel regarding you know, experiencing other cultures, uh, fated events where you might meet someone while you're traveling and it changes your whole life in some way or redirections you, um, you know, fated events with religions and cultural beliefs that transform you from the inside out can also occur as well. And fated interactions and with gurus, with mentors, you can stumble across somebody's YouTube channel, it's the best thing you've ever seen. And, and you know, your life is never the same because you, you've raised your level of consciousness and enlightenment and wisdom through um, experiencing that YouTube channel. So for you, lots of benevolence at a soul level available for you, Gemini, lots of growth in the mental realm and the spiritual realms for you guys. For Cancer, rising or sun or moon people, well, we're going to see the energy here falling, and I'll hold it for this as well, in the eighth house. And this is where the grand conjunction is occurring for Cancer people. Quite an interesting placement, this one. Cancer people are going to have a lot of, over the next 20 years, and you'll notice it from this year onwards, there's going to be a rise in your personal ambition regarding eighth house things. You might decide, cancer people, that, you know, I want to be a past life regressionist. I'm going to be a hypnotist. I'm going to help heal people of their smoking addiction through hypnosis. Or I'm going to um, start studying shamanism. I'm going to get into my mystical side. In fact, the ambition for me to be able to nurture that, that side of myself is off the Richter scale now. You will really notice that. In fact, I've got some strong I just keep thinking this is just so what I'm seeing happen in the lives of my friends you know all these signs I've discussed so far I can already see it happening I've got strong cancer friends who are you know oh I'm going to start hosting women's circles and I'm um, I'm doing a course in drumming and teach people how to make drums um, or they go and do an ayahuasca ceremony or something like that it's all about the eighth house now and your ambitions in that realm your ability to be able to um, work hard regarding any goals you might have to be a mystic or a uh, practitioner of mystical things, that's going to increase. We're going to see a lot more cancer people from now on moving in those realms and activating those sides of themselves. Also, the psychic and intuitive sides of yourself, cancer, are also going to be heavily activated as well. One thing I've just realized as I'm talking here is that Pisces is getting this activation in their 12th house which is like an enhancement of innate Pisces qualities already. And cancer people are getting an activation who are, you know, th these are both water energies getting activations in the spiritual houses. I'll have to see where Scorpio is falling. Oh, it's going to be in the fourth house for Scorpio, which is very, oh, yeah, very right. Okay, on the money. So, um, sorry, I'm just off on my tangent there. But for cancer people, it is about the spiritual, but the mystical side of spirituality, not the religious side, not um, sort of your own personal connection with your divine guides and what have you. It is about being the mystic, you know, hosting shamanic ceremony, um, you know, rituals, that sort of thing. Uh, you might dive into psychology, looking for deep understanding, looking for meaning now will be part of your mission, part of your purpose to uncover hidden mysteries for the world. It, it'll be cancer people who find that library underneath the, uh, the Sphinx that's meant to exist. Um, it'll be cancer people who, you know, um, put two and two together around the linkages between you know, pyramid chambers and what have you. I mean, I need, need to watch a few more documentaries about that sort of thing myself. But for cancer people, you'll be the ones uncovering hidden mysteries. You'll be the ones revealing the secrets that have been, that have been held by Gaia for so long and held um, in, in spirit for so long. A very exciting mission and purpose that cancer people carry that's now going to be activated because this is falling in the very mystical eighth house. For cancer people, um, this is also where we can expand our boundaries. So do be careful, cancer people, because this is not a boundaryless house of the horoscope, but it is a house of the horoscope that correlates to other entities on the shadow side, uh, to crime, um, criminal activity and abuse, crisis. Those sorts of shadow sides are in the eighth house. And with boundaries expanding, 
um, you don't want to go boundaryless. You know, you don't want to sort of have no boundaries and then suddenly people keep stealing stuff out of your garage because crime, you know. Uh, you don't want to uh, um, have no boundaries and then entities start attaching themselves to you. You know, you've got to keep some boundaries in place, cancer people. But your boundaries get bigger now. So where you weren't able to, you know, get anywhere with a past life regression before, now, boom, you can suddenly do a past life regression and it releases all that karmic muck out of your system. Whew, you're free. Now it works. So boundaries are released regarding any blockages you may have had around spirituality, mysticism, and um, you know, connecting with other 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 realms, essentially, other states of consciousness, other parts of your psyche that are hidden and buried within you can now be really, really activated. Also, finally, lucky breaks and fated events occur and when wherever this grand conjunction arrives and woof in the house of inheritances and you know tax rebates and superannuation and sort of getting money from other places besides yourself so you could have a lucky break where you know you might win uh some some i don't know um uh, a court case and then you get a big payout you might you might get an inheritance from a long-lost uncle who you didn't even know existed you know it's it's under this energy cancer that you could have some real lucky breaks with what you receive from the world this is a house of receiving from others and when we talk about eighth house things in terms of receiving it's about learning to receive so part of your mission is to learn to receive from other people um, and that's what a great thing to have lucky breaks in to you know receive benefit receive blessing financially and we're talking materially here this is the the second house for those who don't know the eighth house is two houses one two from the seventh house the house of other people and the second house always has to do with our resources clothing food houses you might get a lot of clothing from someone else you know someone might say oh i'm cleaning out my wardrobe here take all my chanel outfits and there you go or you might suddenly get you know um somebody leaves you a house so it doesn't have to be money although we often talk about money with this this eighth house stuff inheritances and wills and so forth often correlate to financial things but it could be that you get grandma's fur coat when she passes on or you inherit her dog you know inheritances and um and legacies come from uh, from other people to to you receiving from other people so lucky breaks in that regard can come your way okay if you are leo leo rising or sun or moon well we're seeing this fall in your seventh house leo people so you can have a lot of personal business ambition this is a very business oriented house about business partnerships business collaboration so you might if you're a leo rising sun or moon suddenly get all these ideas that will be instigated next year and then for the last for the next 20 years for oh i'm going to collaborate with that that person or we'll start a business together or we're going to in fact i'm a leo sun and i'm in negotiations at the moment of, of a similar nature to this so um that can miraculously appear in your life where suddenly you are negotiating business deals and collaborations and marketing connections and all that sort of thing with other people and that can be a real blessing for you now. In fact, your desire for success in those realms will be amped up because of the grand conjunction occurring here in the house of other people. There is also a specific life mission for Leo people as well regarding seventh house things. It is part of your mission for the next 20 years to work together, to collaborate. Now, that's not easy for Leo people who are highly autonomous and independent. So that could be something of a challenge. For Leo people um, but there are ways around that I'll give you an example you might um, be a practicing chiropractor and you know you want to set up uh, your own business and you've studied and you've got all your mastery and your degrees and you're really good at whatever it is that you, you, you're doing chiropractically but under this energy for the next 20 years you're going to be better off working with others now that doesn't mean that you're working with other chiropractors but you might start up a wellness center where you're a chiropractor they're a, a kinesiologist another person's a naturopath another person's a dietitian and you all have this hub together each with their own individual business but you're all business colleagues together in this one collective brand 
So I hope you're getting my drift here. You can be autonomous and you can participate in uh, collaborations at the same time. And for Leo, I'd suggest that because Leos uh, like to do it their own way. Thank you. <laughs> um, so in that sense, you know, you're facing some, some really exciting times of collaboration. And this will be part of your mission. How can I bring what I've got to share with the world to others in connection with what others have to give as well? Very, very exciting. There's a real expansion of boundaries that's now present under this grand conjunction energy in the seventh house. So, uh, you know, it's a house of other people. You're going to be more embracing of other people, experiencing more connections with other people. It's, it's um, the seventh house is connected to the energy of Libra, which is about, well, what do others need? What do others want? Let's work together. Let's find a balance. Let's find harmony. And so those things will really expand in your life. You'll be looking for win-win solutions and ways to make things work for everyone, including you. So very powerful in that sense. And of course, for Leo people, this is the house of uh, relationships of a, not a romantic kind, it's a love relationships, but committed partnerships. Sort of, I am committed to you, I want to be with you for life, you are my soulmate kind of stuff. I mean, whether you believe in soulmates or not, I'll leave that up to you. But in this sense, faded events. It's because of this grand conjunction that you might experience probably in the next year or so a fated meeting with somebody of destiny for you. Um, it could be that you, um, yeah, so you, you, you're out one night and you meet the love of your life. Or you could have a lucky break because of something someone else does for you. So it doesn't have to be, you know, you meet the love of your life. It could be that you have a lucky break because somebody has been kind to you, someone has been generous to you. I think of the book by Charles Dickens, Great Expectations, which was about this kid, you know, getting the luckiest break of his life to become a wealthy, wealthy young man instead of a poor little farm boy um, because of someone's benevolence. And he, he didn't know for years who was his benefactor. Um, in this case, you might, but you might find that you get a lucky break because somebody is kind to you. Somebody else, this is a house opposite you. Other people might be kind to you. Um, some lucky break occurs because of something someone else does. So that all of these things are possible for uh, Leo, rising sun or moon people. Virgo, rising sun or moon people, well, the energy falls in your sixth house. So it's in sixth house realms that you will be having a lot more personal ambition. And of course, Virgo is very familiar with sixth house realms because Virgo is the natural sign connected to the sixth house. So personal ambition in work, personal ambition for a, a more perfect life, um, for perfection, for health, for well-being, for um, just having everything as it should be, <laughs> so to speak. So your ambition in those realms and your desire in those realms will increase. You might want to grow your, your work life and your contribution to the world. You might want to increase your service in some way to society and help and fix problems in some way in society. And with the grand conjunction falling here, you have what it takes to work hard to make those things reality. Your personal mission, which we see from this, the, the future special mission that we're being called to when we are Virgo rising is to be of service. And you guys are brilliant at that. You're really, really good at that. So um, how can you be of service? How can you fix problems and make the world a better place? Now, a lot of people do this through their everyday work. You know, we're a doctor, we're a lawyer, we're a policeman, we're a social worker, we, we're, um, you know, a healer of some sort, we're a dietitian. we're working to help people fix problems in their life. Sixth house occupations. But you don't have to be in a sixth house occupation to be doing service. You can simply be helping fix problems. Oh, your neighbor's front step looks like it's about to fall apart. You just voluntarily go over and fix it up for him one day. Your, um, you know, your street's full of snow, so you shovel everyone's front driveway for them one Saturday afternoon. Um, you know, that kind of thing, that's, that's service. So look for ways to be of service. In fact, you're gonna be inspired because of the grand conjunction in the sixth house to help, to heal, to serve, to bring this beautiful benevolent energy of Virgo to the world in, in greater capacity. And that's your special life mission and you're so good at it, Virgo. 
Um, don't deny yourself or you know trample yourself down or think that you're less than either. Um, this is a beautiful gift that the world needs. It's one of the, the greatest qualities to serve, to help and to heal. Now your boundaries might expand in this realm as well. And in that sense, you know, you might get more opportunities to help others. You might get more opportunities to heal others. And, you know, Virgos are very beautiful healers. Um, generally speaking here, I mean, everyone has an individual chart, of course, I'm talking very generally. But you might get the chance to heal others through your, you know, Virgos are really brilliant craftspeople, excellent. Um, I like I know so many photographers and graphic designers who are Virgo people. Um, so that might be your service. Oh, let me, um, you know, do some graphic design work for you to help you with your brand new business, um, and I'll do it at mates' rates. So you know, you you can get a good start in life with you with your work endeavor online or whatever it is. Remember, everything is going online. Grand conjunction in Aquarius as I said in the intro. Um, so, you know, you, you'll be looking for ways to serve and help and the opportunities for such will be abundant for you. And of course, that can be a beautiful reward to you as well, I might, might add, because when the opportunities, the boundaries expand regarding how we can serve and help and heal, well, in that sense, then, you know, we, we stand to be busier regarding our work. This is a house of, of work. Our, our working lives can get busier and, you know, we can be appropriately remunerated for what we're offering because we've got busy now so do be careful not to burn out Virgo people because you're having the grand conjunction in a house that can be associated with workaholism and when the boundaries expand here you can take it to the nth degree and it's not always for the best in the, the house of being a workaholic so I would I encourage you during this setting of intentions incubation period at solstice set intentions that are manageable and achievable and where you get a time for you a, a say as well you know where oh, okay I'm going to serve I'm going to do this I'm going to do that um, and I'm going to every week go and have a massage for myself or I'm going to treat myself every week by doing blah 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 do schedule that in as part of your intentions under this energy because you'll need it it's not an easy house, the sixth house, because it is so busy and so connected to work. All right, there can be fated events and lucky breaks that come your way with sixth house. So you might get an opportunity to work in, you know, in an environment that you've only ever dreamed of. You might get a chance to sort of become a team leader or step up in some way uh, in, in your work environment. You might get a lucky break in terms of, you know, you might even could look like you get a um, free weekend at a, a health retreat because this is a house of health and well-being so you get to go and have fun at some health retreat looking after your body or um, you know a, a series of yoga workshops where you're invited to attend and just be part of and you don't have to pay or whatever these sorts of things could come your way lucky breaks regarding health wellness well-being daily activities and work can be a big part of what you're going to experience and what a lovely gift that might be for you in the new year to experience those sorts of things all right libra rising or sun or moon well the grand conjunction for you guys is falling in the fifth house the second luckiest house in the horoscope. So it's in these realms that you are going to see um, your ambitions increase. Your, your personal ambition in fifth house realms can really grow. So I wanna start from the get go saying, if you're a Libra, rising sun or moon, be careful of overinflated ego because when our, ambi our ambitions rise in the house of ego, it, yeah, it can get a bit much, okay? So just, I mean, Libra, Libra people aren't sort of aligned to sort of being you know big headed uh, anyway but um you do need to be careful with this now back to the good stuff jupiter um conjunct saturn grand conjunction in the fifth house of hobbies interests creative intelligence creative expression love and children romance pleasure good times joy what does this mean well you know your ambition for joy and pleasure and good times can now grow, can now increase, and you know you will be able to achieve more fun, more pleasure, more joy in your life. I'm really pleased to hear this. <laughs> I think this is fantastic. Um, you will also have a specific life mission to bring more joy to the world, to bring more fun to the world, to bring more pleasure to the world. Hello, lovely stuff. So that's a big calling for, um, for Librans as well. Not only that, but this is a house it's very connected to writing and also um, 
it's connected heavily to our creative expression. So what is your field of creative expression? Maybe it's writing, maybe it's you know interior design, maybe your creative expression is in painting or um, you know sculpting or making dresses or something like that. What is your hobby and your creative expression and your talents? They're going to be increased and enhanced now because the boundaries expand here wherever the grand conjunction goes. There's no boundaries now. You're, you, you know, you've know you got so much time and creative talent and energy to give to your hobbies, your interests, your writing pursuits, your dressmaking, whatever. Um, that's exciting and fun and lovely. Not only that, but this is your mission to do so. It's your mission. If you like to write and that's your creative expression, the next 20 years, your mission to do so, boom, is there. Doing that, using your creative expression. If you like to make sew dresses then it's your mission for the next 20 years to use your creative expression to do that regardless of whether it makes you any money or not it's really all about using your creative expression and showing it to the world giving it to the world look at what i made look at what i did that's a very leo type energy look um and that's what you've got to do that's your special mission to do that that's your purpose working with children caring not not so much nurturing for children but you know, finding joy and pleasure in children is fifth house. Nurturing children, that's a fourth house thing. Pleasure and joy with children, that's fifth house. So part of your mission and purpose might be now, Libra people, to have more fun with your kids, to enjoy your children more, or just to enjoy young people being around youthful energy or involved in sort of youth culture in some way um, might be a part of what you're here to do for the next 20 years. You know, you might head up a music festival very much the, the nature of a fifth house thing, pleasure, fun, joy, young people. You might be, you know, the events manager at a music festival and that's your mission for the next 20 years to host this awesome music festival. Cool. Um, so expansion of boundaries, specific life purpose. And it's also the house of love and romance. So the boundaries with love and romance might really increase. You might have had sort of tumbleweed city for your dating life. And now with the grand conjunction here, all of a sudden, you know, the boundaries expand and you've got guys and girls sort of, hey, here I am, let's go on a date everywhere. Everywhere you go, someone's winking at you across the bar. It's all happening, you know. <laughs> Suddenly the boundaries expand regarding your love life, your dating life, your romantic life in the fun element of love and the fun element and the pleasurable element of romance and sex can really expand now here with the Grand Conjunction, the fifth house for Libra and people. So fun. Um, also... This is the house of, uh, not the house of, this is the conjunction that heralds fated events, lucky breaks. In the house of risky speculation. So, you know, go and buy tax lot of tickets or, you know, <laughs> I'm not, no, I don't, I never encourage people to do that. I'm, I'm far too conservative when it comes to money. But um, if you're involved in some sort of risky venture, you can get a lucky break with that now. Um, if you're uh, sort of taking a punt on something, then you can find that it, br it brings you reward now um, because the grand conjunction manifests uh, it's a manifesting energy can manifest a lot of um, blessing through risky ventures blessing through children blessing and, and lucky breaks through lovers as well and through your own creative endeavors so you might be wanting to I don't know um, open a boutique of your own clothing that you make and you know somebody has a vacant shop and they're like look I haven't been able to get a tenant for you know all year because of COVID, look, would you just move in? You can have rent free for six months. Just, I need a tenant to be drawing people to this area for whatever reason. And you're like, bonus, away you go. A lucky break comes for your creative talents and your creative abilities. That kind of thing can happen, whatever your creative talent or ability might be. Faded events with lovers, uh, meeting that, that you know eye to eye across a crowded room kind of stuff can occur now that's um, quite exciting and fabulous um yeah so lots of fun for libras lots of excitement do keep me posted in the comments about what unfolds for you libra and people because i'm very intrigued <laughs> with all this beautiful fifth house energy okay scorpio rising or sun or moon people well for you peeps it is oh peeps i'm so sorry my daughter rolls her eyes every time i say that <laughs> so pathetic um, for you guys it is falling in the fourth house 
So the energy of Scorpio rising is experiencing, or sun or moon for that matter, is experiencing the grand conjunction in the fourth house. And this is where your personal ambitions might rise a great deal over the coming 20 years. And this is in the area of home, roots, lineage, heritage, the mother, the maternal, the matriarchal figures. For a lot of Scorpio women, you will be becoming matriarchs of power and influence in the next 20 years because of the grand conjunction in your house of the matriarch. Doesn't mean you're gonna have children, not necessarily, um, but it, it does mean that you will become that elder in 20, you know, over the next 20 years, that elder of influence uh, like a matriarch. So that's very powerful. Um, the grand conjunction in the fourth house can also mean for you that you might have uh, more ambitions regarding your family, you know, your ambitions for your family. Like we want to sort of um, raise our social status from being this family to being this family, you know. No longer are we going to be down here, we're going to be the Brady Bunch or whatever it is uh, your agenda there. Um, but personal ambition regarding family and regarding home. For you guys, you might... Um, in the next 20 years starting this year with a big powerful boom you might increase your home expand the size of your home renovate your home you might uh, move homes to something bigger better something or you might if you're downsizing you might move to something a bit more uh, exclusive or unique to you um, with Aquarius being the sign here uh, it, it rules things that are up high with a view that sort of thing but it doesn't necessarily mean big um, although Jupiter might mean <laughs> that you, for the next year, you find a place that's quite big with a view. But uh, yeah, for Scorpio people, there is an expansion of boundaries regarding where you live and how you live, your home life. So that will grow um, and, and expand and flourish under this energy. And you have a specific mission in life to use your home. That's, that's part of this grand conjunction. This is the energy of home and to use your heritage, to use your roots, to use your lineage. This is part of your mission over the next 20 years. How could you do that? How might you use your heritage? Well, uh, let's say, and I'll use an illustration that I sometimes use in my readings. Let's say that, you know, Nana and her Nana before her had this amazing family cookbook and it's been handed down throughout the ages and you get this family cookbook. Finally, it comes to you. You love every recipe in it because you've grown up with it. This is your heritage, your roots, your, this is your lineage. And you look at this cookbook and you think, the whole world should know about Nana's recipes. They're incredible. So you decide you're gonna make a YouTube channel and you cook through every single recipe one by one each week. And then at the end of, you finish the recipe book, you sell uh, an e-copy of the recipe book online to whoever wants their, the recipes for themselves in ebook form. And so your mission, your special purpose, is to bring family heritage roots or lineage to the world. That's one of the things, that's just an illustration that could absolutely correlate with what we're seeing here for Scorpio people. Bringing their heritage and who they are at a deep core level, at a, in a legacy that they've received and sharing it out with the world. That can be your mission. Um, your mission can also be connected to having a home, using your home for good, um, being part of a community, being part of a, a, a tribe, a connected society. That can also be your mission. That you want to connect with like-minded people. Remember in the intro we talked about um, the mini age of Aquarius. Or, uh, one of the things of that being that we are having more online communities. So you might be your mission might be establishing online communities of connectivity in some way or developing an app that connects people more um, and brings people together both physically and in the online world in the sign of Aquarius down here. That can also be a big, big part of your mission for the next 20 years. But this is also an energy of lucky breaks and fated events so for you, Scorpio rising people, you might fatedly, I don't know, receive a house as an inheritance or, a, you know, part of the legacy. You know, grandma dies and she, she leaves you your house, the house. Um, uh, you know, you might have some sort of, uh, not that it's a lucky break to have your grandmother die. I do need to point that out. I'm not that insensitive. Oh, God. Um, but, you know, you can have a lucky break concerning any fourth house matter, a fated event where you are, oh, you suddenly come across great Auntie Mavis who, you know, you never even knew existed before and you find out you're like peas in a pod. Fated event with family. Um, 
lucky breaks where somebody from family you know might say hey come and join my company you know I want you to be the vice president and you're like whoa cool lucky break because a family happens here um, so lots of benevolence and luck can come your way and manifest for you with regard to family with regard to home or something that you receive from those who've gone before you and as part of your legacy pretty cool huh okay Sagittarius rising Sun or moon people there we are. Oh, I've got to hold Sagittarius every time. They love to go for a walk. I just love the irony. <laughs> Whenever I'm on Gemini or Sagittarius, they always like to keep on moving. Those mutable signs. Um, okay, Sagittarius, rising sun or moon. Well, the grand conjunction's falling in your third house. What is third house? Third house is skills and abilities. It's it's what we can do with our hands. It's It's social media, it's marketing, it's communications, it's connecting, it's workshops, it's, it's small networks and small groups, it's teams, um, and it's small businesses. So it's in all these realms, guys, that you are going to get so much blessing because of this grand conjunction. So in this realm, uh, your personal ambition can be increased. What might that look like? Well, you might have a small business and your ambitions for your small business now expand and grow. And you can really manifest success with your small business because of the grand conjunction falling here. Or you might get an idea for a small business because of the grand conjunction falling here. Perhaps it might look like you might get very ambitious with your, your skills and your talents. And you know, you're like, you know what? I love to cook and I'm gonna go and learn how to cook because you know, that's my thing. Um, and I love cooking at home and I'm gonna do some lessons and then I'm gonna start an on online YouTube channel. I'm gonna be the next Nigella Lawson. And away you go. <laughs> you develop new skills, new talents. You have a high ambition in those realms of skills development and skills use. We're gonna see a lot of Sagittarius um, rising sun or moon, particularly rising, uh, builders start doing building and reno channels on YouTube because of this, I feel. I'm going to see a lot of dressmakers showing you how to make dresses on YouTube and tutorials and that sort of thing going to kind of come flooding out from uh, Sagittarius people over the next 20 years, which is awesome because Sagittarius people are so entertaining. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to learn from a Sagittarius person? And they're also masters with their skill sets as well. So very, very exciting for, for Sagittarian people in that regard. There is a specific mission too associated with where we have a grand conjunction. And so for Sagittarius rising sun or moon people, your specific mission is to share your skills and talents, to teach others, to show them how to put that zip in the dress, to you know, give instruction on how to re-wallpaper a wall, you know, so that it doesn't have sort of ugly 80s wallpaper. <laughs> you know, to show you how to do stuff, to teach to share, to learn, to encourage other people with their skills and their talents, to network, to workshop. It's also part of your mission um, to, to promote, to advertise, to market, to deal with commerce, to deal with trade, to deal with small business situations. That's part of your mission. So a lot of Sagittarius people are gonna set up small businesses as a result of this grand conjunction. Um, and we're going to see a, you know, a lot more of that sort of thing happening, probably online, small businesses that'll come with Sagittarian people. I have a very dear Sagittarius friend. I hope you're watching, honey. Um, and she is totally in the zone with this right now. And I can't wait to see the work that she puts together online with her creative industry. Um, so that's, that's really what's happening. But the cool thing that I want to just finish on for Sagittarius rising sun and moon is the fact that there are lucky breaks and fated events that come with a grand conjunction. So you could get lucky breaks regarding your small business. You could meet the right person at the right time who just takes your small business from this to this. <laughs> Fantastic. You might also um, have, uh, you know, so fated events, fated meetings, and lucky breaks regarding your skills and talents. Somebody, you know, might give you a, a free ticket to a workshop event and you, you discover something that brings you more joy than anything you've ever known before. You know, you might do a drum making workshop and you're like, my God, how did I never get into this before? This is the best thing since sliced bread. So lucky breaks, opportunities that come, um, grab them, run with them when they do. Lucky breaks and fated events that change your life in the realm of skills, talents, abilities, small business, trading, marketing, buying, selling. Um, all of those those fields. 
communications to lucky breaks on social media you know someone offers to make your website cool um, or suddenly you know you launch a video and it just happens to be what everybody wants to see everybody shares it and the whole world knows about it all of a sudden overnight lucky break you're a super popular social media influencer could easily happen <laughs> under the grand conjunction for a Sagittarius person I don't know if you've noticed but a lot of people in Hollywood carry strong Sagittarius um, and there's this popularity element that goes along with that sign so don't be surprised if you see uh, a lot of sudden rises in social media success for Sagittarian people all right um, Capricorn Capricorn rising thank you for waiting guys so much of this year you've probably gone first because all the activity has been in your sign all the action and now finally Capricorn oh where's that armchair take a sit down grab a cup of tea you have can have a break or grab a maybe a margarita might be a bit nicer Capricorn people it's done these two together they're through your sign it is over let us celebrate <laughs> but you are having the grand conjunction in your second house and this is as i've described in the intro highly manifesting and very powerful and it's in second house realms that you're going to experience the blessing of the grand conjunction this means you're going to be very ambitious capricorn people in second house realms ambitious to create security for yourself financial security and that doesn't mean that you want to trample all over everybody else just to have the latest and greatest and you know all the cool stuff it doesn't mean that it can mean that you want to set up a comfortable life for yourself you're actually starting a whole new cycle as Saturn moves out of your first house and begins his journey around the horoscope for you particularly and that's a very special new phase of life new birthing that you have given to a new life and so you want to you're very focused on creating comfort and stability with this new life this new idea this new concept that you've got up and running now that Saturn has moved through your first house so you have a great ambition for maybe you know you want to travel the world and you want to create a job that allows you the luxury of being able to travel the world and work from anywhere that could be how it looks and of course the way you should approach making money should always be through an Aquarian attitude let's be progressive let's be visionary let's um, let's be inventive and bring something new into things so yeah it's it's in financial realms where there can be a lot of personal drive and ambition now for you to succeed and that's a good thing because you are setting up a whole new cycle of life because of Saturn moving here there will be a specific life purpose and mission that you now carry in second house realms maybe it is to make life more comfortable for you or maybe it's to have a career or a job or a life experience that gives more um, what's the word I'm looking for uh, affirmation to who you are because this is the house of how you value yourself giving to yourself loving of the self and so you, you, you might want more life experiences that affirm the self so you're looking for a career that affirms you rather than a career where the boss is always telling you off or criticizing you or the people on YouTube are always giving you shit you want a career where you're feeling valued and feeling appreciated maybe that's what it looks like so you are very ambitious about achieving these things more self-worth more self-valuing and creating greater stability financially and resource wise in your life you'd be very ambitious about that and that's actually your life purpose um, for the next 20 years because we're setting up a new mission a new purpose for ourselves. and there's other things too we're not just limited to one little purpose alone we're many facets and this is a very important one though the grand conjunction sets up a purpose in second house realms to create money and maybe that's to create money so you can be benevolent with it Elvis Presley had a lot of planets in the second house and he uh, you know became obviously quite wealthy uh, but what did he do with a lot of his money he was very much a philanthropist I think from memory he had the ninth house Lord in the the second house with made which made him very philanthropic um, but that might be part of your mission as well is to to create resources and you know money and funds and clothes and shoes and food and all that cool stuff and then use it to bless the world that might be part of your mission that might be part of what you're doing because you do have Aquarius here which is highly altruistic in the second house of resources so I can totally see Capricorn people starting new you know um, thrift stores or um, 
charity shops that raise money to help you know uh, the starving or the homeless and that sort of thing or um, doing stuff we using stuff using our things our material stuff to help altruistically the world and this is I feel a big part of your mission and purpose for the next 20 years Capricorn to generate um, resources and to use it in an altruistic manner for the world there's no one more suited to doing that than Capricorn you have the drive you had the work the hard work ethic um, to be able to manifest that and and bring that to the world what a gift and what a privilege to do that too as your special mission now you might find Capricorn people that your boundaries will expand in regard to how you feel about yourself and how you generate money and resources in life because this energy of the grand conjunction will expand the sign the house where it resides boom expansion of resources expansion of my self-worth and self-value expansion of um, uh, you know how you, you use your voice expansion of how you look it's about beauty and aesthetics um, and, and you know making yourself more beautiful or just watch out Capricorn people that you don't expand the waistline <laughs> because this is a house of food and if boundaries are expanding then the amount of food that you are able to have or exposed to might increase and therefore the body can also increase as well so do just watch that um, and finally this energy represents faded events and lucky breaks you can get some really wonderful lucky breaks that help you generate resources maybe you get the chance to um, you know be present on some sort of internet channel or something like that um, and that gives you you know that lucky break that you need to be able to go traveling the world as a influencer or a you know a a travel writer or something like that because you've had a lucky break that gave you a leg up into an industry that's quite cutthroat um, you had a lucky break that created resources for you to be able to live the luxurious pleasurable life that you dream of so I've used you know traveling the world as an illustration this isn't really a house of travel but for some people that is um, that's an idea of you know that's a luxurious lifestyle just moving from place to place living where I want one moment you're in the French Riviera the next moment you're down in Morocco like you know that can that is considered to be quite luxurious uh, a concept for a lot of people who can't do that so that's why I chose that but maybe it wasn't the best illustration to give um, because it does correlate to travel and that's not necessarily a second house thing maybe faded events and lucky breaks that you know bring you more uh, opportunity to collect something or to accumulate something or to um, have your needs fulfilled in the physical world so you might meet somebody who says yeah I've, I've got uh, a couple of houses why don't you go and live in that house while you're working on this project for me and you're like bonus cool I save on rent because I'm gonna be you know doing this project for this person living in their house I don't have to pay rent or I don't have to pay utilities bonus lucky break regarding resources for living that's just another example that's probably a bit more pertinent in, in many ways so I hope you're getting the idea you can meet people who bring you a lot of luck in physical realms with the resources that you need to support your journey through life what a gift what a blessing and isn't this grand conjunction just so exciting for us all do check out your sun sign your moon sign and your rising sign because they're all important and I and my friends uh, and colleagues and my children uh, we're all seeing actually how the promise of the Grand Conjunction is actually lining up with what's going on in our individual lives through all three sign placements so make sure you check them all out I always close with a prayer and never has there been a better time to be full of gratitude to the energy of the universe so I hope you join me energy of love present in the universe we are so excited to see firstly the wrapping up of 2020 but secondly the to, to really feel into the promise of the grand conjunction to feel into the promise that it heralds for the next 20 years we ask that love surrounds the planet that love fills the hearts of everyone who sees this video or shares this video we ask that love is present in their experience externally and within their hearts and in their soul and in their mind so that we can raise the vibration on the planet and join with the energy of the Grand Conjunction to bring greater light and greater expansion and greater blessing and luck and prosperity to the world. 
and so it is. Thanks for joining me. Have a glorious Christmas. I hope to have a video for you next week and I'll catch you then.